but say if I had a 10K race tomorrow, I would pick the Nike. So welcome back to the channel. Today we have a shoe battle between the new and highly anticipated Streak Fly, which was released in the UK on the 28th of uh, January, I believe. I just picked it up. Um, I think it sold out in something like five minutes. So if you did pick this shoe up in this Proto colorway, I think you're one of the lucky ones. I believe it's coming out in the Fast Pack colorway, it's called. I think Pro Directors shared some images of that one, so that'll be coming out very soon. Versus the Vaporfly, which has been my road racing shoe for the last two years. Um, I've now raced a 10K in both of these shoes, so I'm gonna give you um, my verdict, um, along with some stats and figures, and who I think uh, these shoes are best suited for in terms of races. So first I'm going to go over some stats and figures and compare the two shoes. I'm then going to go over my 10k races in both the Alpha and Vaporfly and then finally I'm going to give my verdict if I could only pick one shoe um, for a 10k race which would I pick. Um, just as a bit of a disclaimer I've purchased both these shoes with my own money um, so all my thoughts and opinions like always are my own and if you would like to help support the channel I have a Nike affiliate link which is in the description of all my YouTube videos um, so basically if you use that affiliate link um, the channel gets five to seven percent um, of that purchase um, that I then can reinvest in more videos like this one um, to help buy more shoes like the Vaporfly and the Streakfly. So let's start with some stats. The Streakfly comes in at £135 which I think is really reasonable um, especially for a road racing shoe. Um, yeah, that's a sort of price point that's going to be a lot more affordable for the average consumer. So I'm hoping that when they do um, restock that everyone can get hold of a pair um, that wants them. Whereas the Vaporfly, this colorway um, and the original Vaporfly 1, I personally didn't get on too well with the Vaporfly, Vaporfly 2. I just prefer this upper. Um, but anyway, this shoe costs £240. Um, I did pick this up in the sale at 167 um, so around £30 difference for me, but you're looking at £105 difference um, in the retail price, which is quite a considerable amount um, for shoes that I have found had very little difference in terms of my overall performance over that 10k distance. So on to the weight, the Street Fly in a men's size 9 weighs 182 grams, whereas the Vaporfly comes in at 206, sorry I just had to check my notes, so that's uh, 24 grams difference between the two shoes, which you may argue is not a huge amount, which it isn't. Both of these shoes are very, very lightweight racing shoes. Um, however, when I put this shoe on my foot, it does feel lighter. Um, and I'm not sure if that's maybe just the placebo effect that I know it's lighter, so it feels lighter. Um, and also this has the new shoe feel to it, whereas this one, I know how this feels because I've been racing it in two years. So that's also something to bear in mind um, with this sort of shoe comparison is I've used this for a long time so I'm less excited about this than the new say Street Fly. And on to the drop, so slightly different drop between these two shoes. The Street Fly has a six millimeter drop from heel to toe whereas the Vaporfly has an eight mil. But the real difference here is between the stack height. So in the heel area here, the Street Fly has 32 millimeters of that Zoom X foam whereas in the Vaporfly it has something like 39 or 40 millimeters of foam right at the upper limit um, of what's allowed to be legal in road racing. In terms of the carbon plate, or should I say lack of carbon plate, the Vaporfly has a full length carbon plate um, from toe to heel, whereas the Street Fly actually doesn't have a carbon plate at all. It has something a little bit different. Um, it has a Pebax shank in the midfoot, which is sort of, um, it's about that long in um, length in this shoe and that just helps offer a little bit of stability but if you can if I show you how these shoes flex um, the street fly is much much more flexible than say the vapor fly which is of much firmer um, in terms of the midsole and that comes down to the carbon plate when I first took this shoe out for a run I thought maybe the zoom X foam was slightly different in terms of how it's been made because um, it just feels a lot softer than the Vaporfly. On closer inspection I think the foams are exactly the same, it's just that this Vaporfly has the carbon plate so it's a lot firmer, the foam doesn't give as much because it's being supported by that carbon plate. So they are the main stats and features and differences between the two shoes. There's not a lot in it, um, slightly lighter, slightly less aggressive in the, toe, the heel to toe drop 
and £135 versus £140. Moving on to the 10K races that I did in, this, in these shoes. So the first race I did was a 10K in Norwich, the Valentine's 10K put on by the Norfolk Gazelles. It was a really, really good race. I would highly recommend um, putting that one in your race calendar for 2023. Um, but in terms of the actual race, um, it was quite a windy day. The course was fairly undulating um, and there was a good level of competition on the day. Um, and I clocked a time of 32 minutes and one second, just one second off my 2022 goal, which is to break 32 minutes for the 10K. I'm hoping I will do it in one of these shoes. I'll reveal which I'm gonna be using moving forward in the next section of this video. Um, but yeah, uh, the race went really well. I enjoyed the shoe. It was actually the first time I used the streak fly. Um, I just thought I'd brave it for that race distance because after all, it says on the side here, it's designed for the five and 10K race distance. So I thought what better way to test it than to take it um, into a race. It was a little bit risky, um, but yeah, it paid off. Ran 32.01. Um, and the second uh, 10K I did was in the Vaporfly. So exactly a week later, um, which was the London Winter Run 10K. Um, put on by let's do this.com um, again a really good race um, completely flat course this time however it was still windy um, and the course was very windy um, and I would say there was slightly less competition for this race um, than there was at the Norwich 10k which I raced in the street fly in the vapor fly I clocked a time of 32 minutes and 14 seconds so 13 seconds slower than in the street fly but then then again, there is some other variables. Um, obviously the course was different, the level of competition was different, the conditions on the day. Um, so 14 seconds, is that a lot? Not really, I would say in terms of time performance, um, they're virtually the same for me. Um, I can't really say that 14 seconds is a huge difference. So then I had a little look at the stats between the two races and one thing I noticed maybe in um, racing in these two shoes is the streak fly. I felt like I had a much higher cadence so my ground contact time was slightly less and my steps per minute was higher. So when I looked at the stats um, I wasn't surprised to see that my average cadence in the streak fly was 184 steps per minute which is really high for me um, whereas in the vapor fly I only had 179 beat, um, steps per minute sorry. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a difference there between the cadence, um, which is what I thought and felt during the two runs. In terms of the fastest kilometer in the streak fly, I ran a uh, 2 minutes and 59 seconds uh, kilometer according to my watch. And in the vapor fly, I ran a 3.02 kilometers um, in those races. So again, not a huge difference. Um, the slowest kilometer, however, in the vapor fly during that um, London Winter Run 10K was 3 minutes and 31 seconds. But again, uh, that was linked to mainly the corners and the wind on the day, whereas the slowest um, kilometer in the streak fly was 321. So not only did it have the fastest kilometer, it also, its slowest kilometer was also faster than the vapor fly. Um, so yeah, some interesting stats there between the two shoes during the races. Only 14 seconds separates them, or 13 seconds, sorry, in terms of overall performance. Um, but for me, this one just felt a little bit faster and I could get a little bit of a faster turnover. Um, and yeah, that helped push me on to a faster time. So which of these shoes comes out on top? Um, so for me, I marginally feel faster when running in the street fly. And I feel for me, when choosing a race day shoe, that is the main factor, which feels fastest, which do I feel more confident and comfortable in? Um, and that shoe would be the street fly at the moment. Uh, this may change down the line. I remember when the Vaporfly and Alpha Fly came out, um, I used to, really favor the vapor fly for any distance really but then as i ran more in the alpha fly i realized that yeah over the longer distance it had some qualities that maybe the vapor fly didn't so i'm not saying that is my out and out decision um, but say if i had a 10k race tomorrow i would pick the nike street fly um in at 135 pounds as well that's a no-brainer 105 pounds difference between the shoe i would definitely recommend picking up the street fly if you're more on a budget um, I think that's great value for money and I've decided to use this actually as a training shoe so I'm going to use it on my track workouts which does mean this sort of exposed EVA is going to wear down quite quickly and because it hasn't got that rigidity of the carbon plate 
um, I feel like the durability is going to be a lot less on the street fly than say the vapor fly. So for the masses I actually think the vapor fly is still going to be the favored shoe of choice just because it's been around now for around um, two, two, three years. It sort of has that prestige um, of being the best racing shoe on the market and I certainly don't think the street fly is the shoe to knock that Vaporfly off the top spot. I would also say it's a lot more versatile than the Streakfly. This is definitely designed more for the 5K and 10K races. Um, whereas the Vaporfly, you can do 5Ks up to ultra marathons in this shoe. Um, I even did a 50 kilometer trail race in this and it did really well. Not this actual shoe. I, had an, I have an orange version as well, which has taken a bit of a battering over the last 800 something kilometers. This one is the one I saved just for race days. So yeah, that pretty much summarizes my verdict on the two shoes. Um, for me, I personally would pick the Street Fly for my 10K races as well as my 5K races. Anything above that, I will still be racing in the Vapor Fly. Um, for the masses, I still think this shoe is going to be the road racing shoe of choice in 2022, unless maybe a newer version of the Vaporfly or Alphafly comes out and it completely trumps this one. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. Um, just a little reminder, if you would like to make a donation to the channel to help support um, the production of these videos, so for example, the purchase of shoes, you can do so via the PayPal link below. All the money that's been donated, I've reinvested into the channel so far. So for example, the street fly I purchased with the donations in the PayPal account. I recently just entered the Norwich um, run the run Norwich 10k sorry which is later in the year again with the PayPal donation so yeah just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has donated to the channel um, I have thought about maybe setting up a patreon um, I'm not quite sure how it works so maybe if you would let me know in the comments is that something you would be interested in signing up for and if so what sort of sort of perks would you like as a patreon of the channel um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Um, two amazing shoes. I really hope if you haven't been able to pick up the Street Fly, um, you can pick it up in the next drop. But yeah, until next time, aspire to run, run to inspire.